Hi, I'm Spencer Moore, Commissioner of the Georgia Department of Driver Services, where it's our mission to provide secure driving identity credentials to our customers with excellence and respect. Whether you're starting a new career as a truck driver, renewing your driver's license online, need a credential to travel through airports, or you're a business partner, we can't wait to serve you. In the meantime, stay safe on the road. Hi. I'm with the Georgia Department of Driver Services, and today we're going to meet the truck. After this video, you'll have the tools you need to complete the pre-trip inspection and continue practicing to join the 300,000 other CDL drivers on Georgia roads. Truck drivers are essential for transporting goods and keeping the nation's economy going. So we need you. This video will be broken down into sections A, B, C, and F, just like the inspection. You will only be tested on one of these sections, but you won't know which until your exam, so it's important that you know everything. We'll also cover how to inspect the coupling system, external lights, inside the cab, and the brakes. These inspections will be part of every exam. So grab something to take some notes, because this information will steer you in the right direction. And good luck. Hi, I'm Chris Mumpower and I've been an examiner for five years. About half the people who take this test fail it, but don't worry, I'm going to give you some helpful tips. First, remember these acronyms. They will help you remember phrases you will need to say out loud for almost every part of the truck. PMS, properly mounted and secure. NCBB, not cracked, bent, or broken. NMH, not missing any hardware. A, B, C, D, F. No abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. D, O, G. No debris, oil, or grease. Anything that's rubber, you must check for A, B, C, D, F. Abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Anything that requires air or oil, you must say it does not leak. Anything that requires a measurement, you must say the exact fraction. For example, for the tread depth. It's important you say it must be no less than or at least 430 seconds of an inch. Now, a couple of tips before we start. Point two or touch each specific part you're inspecting. This is the alternator. Say out loud what you're looking at and what you're looking for. It's properly mounted and secure. No missing hardware. Not cracked, bent, or broken. The wires and connectors have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rots, or frays. The attached belt has no more than three quarter of inches of play. Bring a pointer so you can be specific. You won't get credit for pointing in a general area. Now let's get started. When you arrive on inspection day, the examiner will give you the keys. The first thing you should do, put the keys in your pocket and make sure the wheels are chopped. Now your inspection day is ready to begin. First, approach the front of the tractor and look for puddles or engine leaks. Remember, if any part of the truck requires air or oil, you must say out loud, it does not leak. Then check the size of the trailer for leaning, which could indicate suspension issues. Check your clearance marker lights using the acronyms. As you inspect, say out loud whether they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware and tell the examiner that they're amber in color and clean. Do the same thing as you check your headlights, both high and low beam. Show and tell the examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Clear in color and clean. Check your emergency flashes and turn signals. Again, go through the acronyms aloud. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and make sure these are amber in color and clean. Then check your reflectors with the same acronyms. Say out loud if they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, amber in color, and clean. See how important those acronyms are? Now we'll move on to the hood. Tell your examiner you're gonna open the hood by saying clear loudly for safety. Clear. Point at the overall holes and clamps and go through these acronyms aloud. 
Say you're checking that they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Check and say it is not leaking, and check and say that the clamps are secure. Identify and inspect out loud the following eight components. Belt-driven alternator, properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Check wires for splices and frays. Check belt for abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Tell the examiner the belt should move no more than three quarters of an inch. Coolant reservoir. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Check fluid is in proper operating level. Check and say it is not leaking. Belt driven water pump. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Check the belt for no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Check and say that the belt moves no more than three quarters of an inch. All level. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Explain how you would check oil level by removing the dipstick, wiping off the end, and reinserting the dipstick to ensure it's in operating range. Power steering reservoir. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Make sure the attached hoses and cap are not leaking. Check fluid level is between the add and full marks. Gear-driven power steering pump. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Gear-driven air compressor. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Make sure to tell the examiner that the compressor is gear-driven. Gear-driven steering box and associated hoses. Properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware like castle nuts, bolts, cotter pins. Check hoses for abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Check that it's not leaking. Next, check the suspension parts. Remember, you must name each item, point to or touch each specific part, and fully explain out loud what you're inspecting. Inspect the spring mounts and hangers on the front and rear. Tell the examiner they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Point to the leaf springs and say they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Check the U-bolts. Are they properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware? Tell the examiner you're looking for any rust marks or rub marks indicating looseness. Check that your shock absorber is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, is not leaking. Next, move to your steering linkage. The next five parts are all secured with a castle nut and cotter pan. So look for those and don't forget to say everything out loud. Point to the pitment arm. Make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Make sure it's secured with the castle nut and cotter pan. Do the exact same thing with the drag link the upper control arm, the lower control arm, and the rod. You're almost done with section A. Next, you will check the brake parts, then the tires and rims. And for this next part, pay close attention to the correct measurements and what you need to say out loud. Start with your brake hoses. Use your acronyms. Tell the examiner you're checking that they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken not missing any hardware, have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, or dry rots or frays, and not leaking. Point out the brake chamber, make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking, and securely held together with a clamp. Look at your push rod. Again, check it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, then check the measurement and say out loud that it should have no more than one inch of free play when the brakes are released. Check your slack adjuster. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Point to the brake linings. Check they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, no debris, oil, or grease. Then check the measurement and say out loud that it has at least one quarter inch in thickness. Finally, inspect the brake drum. Check it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, 
not missing any hardware, has no debris, oil, or grease. Make sure there are no illegal holes or welds. You've made it to the last part of Section A, the tires and rims. Keep using your acronyms and fully explaining the inspection out loud. And here's a helpful hint. If it's rubber, you must say you're looking for A, B, C, D, F. Abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rots, or frays. If it requires air or oil, you must say it does not leak. Check your tires, tell the examiner they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or fray on the sidewalls. Check the tread is evenly worn and has at least 4 30 seconds of an inch of tread depth. Make sure there's no space between the rim and tire, has no rust to indicate leaks, and check for proper air pressure with air gauges. Point to the rim, check that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and have no illegal holds or welds. Inspect the lug nuts, show and tell the examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, have no rust trails, rub marks, or shiny threads indicating looseness or cross-threading. Next, check the valve stem with metal cap, make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Explain you'll use an air pressure gauge to ensure tire is at proper inflation level, which can be found on the sidewall of the tire. And finally, inspect the hub oil seal. Tell the examiner you're checking that it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Check the oil level at the sight glass and check the outer rubber seal for abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Make sure the rubber seal is not leaking. You have now completed section A of the inspection. Go back and review anything you need to see again. If you're asked to complete Section B, you'll be inspecting everything from the driver door to the rear of the tractor. Start with putting the keys in your pocket and making sure the wheels are chopped. Then you can begin to inspect. Make sure you point to or touch each specific part. Name it for the examiner and say exactly what you're looking for. Once again, those acronyms will come in handy. Begin by inspecting the side light. This includes your signal, marker, and flasher. As you inspect, say out loud whether it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Confirm aloud that it is amber in color and clean. Check the mirror and mounts. Tell the examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Confirm aloud that the mirror is clean and there's nothing to obstruct your view. Make sure the mirror is adjusted for you when you get in. Next, inspect the door. Make sure it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and it opens and closes properly. Check the door hinges. They should be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Inspect the door seal. Make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rots, or frays, and is not leaking. Make sure you say all of this out loud. Next, check the fuel tank. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and look under the tank for leaks so you can tell the examiner it's not leaking. Do the same thing with the fuel cap. Check that it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Check the duff tank. Confirm out loud that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking, and the tank is at least one eighth full. Inspect the steps. Show and tell the examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, no debris, oil, or grease. Look at the catwalk and the steps. Confirm that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and have no debris, oil, or grease. Check the reflectors on the back of the cab. Confirm out loud that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, clear in color, not ripped or torn if it's tape. 
Next, look at the drive shaft. Check that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and not twisted. Inspect the U-joint. Say you're inspecting that it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and has no debris, oil, or grease. Point out the exhaust. Tell the examiner it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no signs of soot, and is not leaking. Then check the frame and cross members. Confirm aloud that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and have no illegal holes or welds. Next, check the suspension parts. Remember, you must name each item, point to, or touch each specific part, and fully explain out loud what you're inspecting. Inspect the spring mounts and hangers. Mention there are two and point to the front and rear. Make sure they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Point to the leaf springs. Show and tell the examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and not missing any hardware. Check the U-bolts. Say they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Look for any rust marks or rub marks indicating looseness. Check your shock absorber. It is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and is not leaking. Then inspect your airbag and mounts. Tell the examiner they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Is not leaking. Specify each one by pointing to them. You're halfway done with section B. Next, you'll check the brake parts, the rear axle, and finally the rear of the tractor. For this next part, pay close attention to the correct measurements and what you need to say out loud. Start with your brake hoses. Use your acronyms. Confirm out loud they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays, and are not leaking. Point out the brake chamber. Tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking, and held securely together with a clamp. Look at your push rod. Again, check it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Then check this measurement and say aloud that it should have no more than one inch of free play when the brakes are released. Check your slack adjuster. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Point to the brake linings. Check they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware no debris, oil, or grease. Then check this measurement and say aloud that it has at least one quarter inch in thickness. Finally, inspect the brake drum. Show and tell the examiner that it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no debris, oil, or grease, has no illegal holes or welds. Check your tires. Tell your examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays on the sidewalls. The tread is evenly worn and has at least two thirty seconds of an inch of tread depth. Make sure there's no space between the rim and tire, has no rust to indicate leaks, and check for proper air pressure with air gauges. Point to the rim. Confirm out loud that it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and have no illegal holes or welds. Inspect the lug nuts. Tell the examiner you're looking for them to be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, 
have no rush trails, rub marks, or shiny threads indicating looseness or cross-threading. Next, check the valve stem with metal cap. Make sure you say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Explain you'll use an air pressure gauge to ensure tire is at proper inflation level, which can be found on the sidewall of the tire. Look at your axle seal. Make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Check your bud spacing. Show and tell your examiner that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. The tires are evenly spaced with no debris between them. At the rear of the tractor, check your mud flaps. Make sure they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Look at your reflectors. Tell the examiner they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, red in color and clean. Inspect the reflective tape. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware red and white in color, clean, and not ripped or torn. And lastly, check the lights. Look at the signal, marker, flashers, and brakes. Show and tell the examiner they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, red in color, and clean. You have now completed section B of the inspection. Go back and review anything you need to see again. If you're asked to complete section C, you'll be inspecting the trailer. Start with putting the keys in your pocket and making sure the wheels are chocked. As you go through your inspection, make sure you point to or touch each specific part of the trailer. Name it for the examiner and fully explain out loud what you're looking for. Once again, those acronyms will come in handy. Start by looking at the clearance marker lights. Confirm aloud that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, amber in color, and clean. Inspect the header board or bulkhead. Tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no missing rivets, and is cargo worthy. Look at the side of the trailer. Check that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no missing rivets, and is cargo worthy. Check the trailer frame and cross members. Explain you're checking that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no illegal holes or welds, and is cargo worthy. Do the same with the trailer floor. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no illegal holes or welds, and is cargo worthy. Check the landing gear. This includes the frame, cross members, legs, feet, and crank handle. Tell the examiner you're making sure they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. The feet are fully raised with no debris. The crank handle is properly stowed. Inspect the DOT reflective tape. Show and tell the examiner that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, red and white in color, clean, and not ripped or torn. Covers 50% of the length of the trailer. Inspect the side light. This includes your signal, marker, and flasher. As you inspect, say out loud whether it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Confirm aloud that it's amber in color and clean. Check your air and electric lines. Go through all the acronyms. Say it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. No abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. It is not leaking. Point out the tandem frame and slide rail. Confirm aloud that it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no illegal holes or welds. Check the tandem release arm. Tell the examiner you're checking that it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and is in the locked position. Do the same for the sliding pins. Say they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and in the lock position. Finally, check the torque arm. Make sure that it's properly mounted and secure, 
not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Next, check the suspension parts. Keep in mind, some trailers do not have all the parts. If it's not there, you don't have to talk about it. Otherwise, keep going through your inspection out loud. Inspect the spring mounts and hangers. Mention there are two and point to the front and rear. Tell the examiner they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Point to the leaf springs. Show the examiner they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and not shifted. Check the U-bolts. Explain you're looking for them to be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and tell the examiner you're looking for any rust marks or rub marks indicating looseness. You're halfway done with section C. Now you'll check the brake parts, the tires, and rim, and finally the rear of the trailer. For this next part, pay close attention to the correct measurements and what you need to say out loud. Start with your brake hoses. Use the acronyms. Confirmed aloud, they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays, and are not leaking. Point out the brake chamber. Tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, it's not leaking, and securely held together with a clamp. Look at your push rod. Again, check it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Then check this measurement and say aloud it should have no more than one inch of free play when the brakes are released. Check your slack adjuster. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Point to the brake linings. Say there, properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, no debris, oil, or grease. Then check this measurement and say aloud that it has at least one quarter inch in thickness. Finally, inspect the brake drum. Show and tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no debris, oil, or grease. Make sure there are no illegal holes or welds. Keep using your acronyms and fully explaining the inspection out loud. And here's a helpful hint. If it's rubber, you must say you're looking for abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, and fray, A, B, C, D, F. If it requires air or oil, you must say it does not leak. Check your tires. Show and tell the examiner that they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or fray on the sidewalls. Check the tread is even worn and has at least 4 30 seconds of an inch of tread depth. Make sure there's no space between the rim and tire, has no rust to indicate leaks, and check for proper air pressure with an air gauge. Point to the rim. Confirm aloud it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and has no illegal holes or welds. Inspect the lug nuts. Tell the examiner you're checking that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Have no rust trails, rub marks, or shiny threads indicating looseness or cross-threading. Next, check this valve stem with metal cap. Make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Explain you'll use an air pressure gauge to ensure tire is at the proper inflation level which can be found on the sidewall of the tire. And finally, inspect the hub oil seal. Show and tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. It's not leaking. Check the oil level at the sight glass and check the outer rubber seal for abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Make sure and say out loud the rubber seal is not leaking. Check your bud spacing. Tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Make sure the tires are spaced evenly with no debris between them. Check your mud flaps. Confirm aloud that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Cover the width of the tire, are not dragging the ground, and are not ripped or torn. Inspect the ABS light if the trailer is equipped. Make sure it's properly mounted and secure, 
not cracked, bent, or broken. Not missing any hardware, amber in color, and clean. Look at your reflectors. Show and tell the examiner that they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, red in color, and clean. Check the rear marker light. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, red in color, and clean. You've made it to the last part of section C, the rear of the trailer. Keep going through your acronyms aloud. Start by checking the trailer doors. Show and tell the examiner they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, have no illegal holes or wells, and are cargo worthy. Check the hinges or cables. Make sure they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Look at the locks and latches. Tell the examiner they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, in the lock position, and are cargo worthy. Look at your reflectors. They'll be on the doors if equipped. Confirm aloud they're properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, clean, and not ripped or torn. Check your DOT reflective tape. Explain you're looking to make sure it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Red and white in color, clean, not ripped or torn, covers 100% of the rear of the trailer. Finally, check the lights. Specify the outside red lights or signal, markers, and flashers. Say the inside red lights or marker and brake lights. Explain the three center red lights or marker lights. Make sure they are all properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, red in color, and clean. You've now completed section C of the inspection. Go back and review everything you need to see again. If you're asked to complete section F, you'll be inspecting the whole truck and trailer. That means you need to do everything from sections A, B, and C. Go back and review each section to make sure you know it well enough to teach someone else. For a paper guide, click here. The next three parts will be on every test no matter which section you are asked to complete. Let's start with the coupling system. The coupling area has all the components it takes to connect the truck to the trailer. Start on the tractor side. Check your air connections. Go through the acronyms. Say out loud if they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Remember, anything that requires air and oil, you must say it's not leaking. Next, check your electrical connections. Show and tell the examiner that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. There's no debris, and it's securely locked in place. Point out the air lines. Say they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Not leaking. Hanging freely above the catwalk. Inspect the electric line. Confirm out loud it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays. Hanging freely above the catwalk. Next, check your glad hands and the rubber grommet seals. Tell the examiner the glad hand should be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not leaking. Then make sure the rubber grommet seals have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays, are not leaking, have no debris. Check the electrical connection. Confirm aloud it is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. There's no debris, and it's securely locked in place. Point to the apron. Tell the examiner you're looking for it to be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no illegal holes or welds. Next, if the trailer is equipped, check the airline and cylinder. Say it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or frays, and not leaking. Check the fifth wheel skid plate. Tell the examiner it should be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and properly greased. Look at the release arm. 
Confirm allowed, it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and in the locked position. Next, check the platform. Keep using the acronyms. Tell the examiner it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Do the same for the mounting bolts and side rail. Then look at the locking pins. Tell the examiner you're making sure that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and in the locked position. All right, so this next part is very important. You have to actually move under the trailer, so tell your examiner. All right, so this is your kingpin. It's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Your locking jaws are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, and securely locked around the shank of the kingpin. And the final step, show the examiner the spacing or clearance required to operate a combination vehicle. It helps to remember 303. Tell the examiner you need at least three feet between the truck and trailer, zero space between the apron and the fifth wheel skid plate, and at least three feet between the mud flap and the landing gear. You have now completed the coupling system inspection. Remember, this part will be on every test, so go back and watch as many times as you need. When you have completed the outside inspection of the vehicle, the examiner will ask you to perform an external lights operation check. This part will be on every test. At this point, you need to ask the examiner to help you check every light on the tractor and trailer. Get in the cab and test out each light, while the examiner, who's standing outside, confirms each one is working properly. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Four-way. Low beam headlights. Five clearance lights. High beam lights. Would you please check the back lights for me? Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Four-way flashers. Brake lights. Now will you check the lights at the back of the trailer? Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Four-way flashers. Brake lights. After you've gone through each light, the examiner will get in the truck with you, start the engine, and point out the ABS light. Listen for the air governor to cut out. When this happens, tell the examiner. So the governor cutout was between 120 and 140 PSI. Now you have completed your external lights check. You're ready to move on to the end cab inspection. For this part of the inspection, you will check everything inside of the cab and do three brake tests. This part is on every test and it's where most people fail, so pay close attention. Start by checking the safety equipment. Tell the examiner you're looking for a properly secured and properly charged fire extinguisher three red and orange reflective triangles, and six fuses in the overhead compartment or glove box. All the equipment should be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Next, check the seat belt. Refer back to your acronyms. Show until the examiner is properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware, not ripped or torn, and latches and unlatches properly. Check the mirror and mounts on the sides and the hood. Check that they are properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Confirm out loud that the mirror is clean and there is nothing to obstruct your view. Make sure the mirror is adjusted for you to see down the side of the trailer. Inspect the windshield. Confirm out loud it's properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Clean and there's nothing to obstruct your view. 
Now you're ready to complete a safe engine start. Show and tell the examiner. Vehicle should be in neutral. Make sure brakes are set, then safely start the engine. Once the truck is on, check all of the gauges. Look at the oil pressure gauge. Show until the examiner. The warning light is off and it rises to the proper operating range. Check the voltmeter. Ensure the alternator is charging the batteries and confirm out loud. It increases to the normal range of 12 to 14 volts. Point out the water temperature gauge. Show until the examiner. The warning light is off and it rises to the proper operating range. Next, check your air gauges. Be specific when you tell the examiner. The governor cuts in at 100 PSI and cuts out between 120 and 140 PSI. If your truck is equipped with a diesel exhaust fluid gauge and light, point them out to the examiner. The bar showed the amount of depth. Then check your indicator lights. Show and tell the examiner that all of the following light up properly. Left and right turn signals, four-way flashers, low beams, high beams. Check the windshield wipers and washers. Say aloud that they should be properly mounted and secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, not missing any hardware. Flush to the windshield and working properly. For this part, make sure you see washer fluid come out. Next, check your heat and defrost. Turn the fan to full. Turn the temperature to heat. Find the setting for floor and defrost. Put your hands on the dash to fill the defrost and hands to the floor to fill for heat. Finally, test both of your horns and make sure they work. Test your CD horn then test your air horn. Here's where some people mess up. Do not say you have completed your end cap until you have done all three brake tests. Those come next. Start with the air brake test. You have to do this perfectly or it's an automatic fail. So we're going to show you what a successful air brake test looks like from start to finish. Begin with the governor test. Earlier during the end cap inspection, you listen for the governor to cut out between 120 and 140 PSI after you've gone through all of the gauges and indicator lights. Make sure you start the air brake test by telling the examiner this. The governor cutout was between 120 and 140 PSI. I'm now going to perform an air brake test. If you don't acknowledge this, it's an automatic fail. Once you've confirmed the governor cutout, begin by turning the engine off. Turn the key to the on position, but do not start the truck. Keep both feet flat on the floor and push in the yellow and red valves. Next, tell the examiner this. So now I'm gonna do an applied leak test. I'm gonna apply pressure to the brake pedal and within 60 seconds, I should not lose more than four PSI. Would you mind assisting me? Move your foot from the floor and apply pressure to the brake. Start counting to 60. At the end of the one minute, tell the examiner this. I did not lose more than four PSI in one minute. Then fan your brakes and make sure you're telling the examiner exactly what you're doing and why. I'm fanning my brakes until the low air indicator comes on at around 60 PSI. I'll make sure that the buzzer stays on. Stop fanning your brakes and tell the examiner this. The low air indicator came on at 60 PSI. Continue fanning your brakes to 20 to 45 PSI and tell the examiner what you're doing. Keep an eye on the red and yellow valves. They should pop out. Do not touch them, but make sure both valves pop out. I'm continuing to fan my brakes to 20 to 45 PSI. The brakes have popped out. Once both of those valves have popped out, your air brake test is done. Remember, this part has to be done perfectly from start to finish or it's an automatic fail. So here are a couple of helpful tips to nail this part. If at any point you mess up, ask the examiner to start over. They'll let you do it again, but make sure you start from the very beginning by acknowledging the governor cutout. Nail the verbiage, practice telling the examiner exactly what you're doing and why. Make sure you get the measurements exact. Watch the valves, if only one pops out, keep pumping the brakes. Eventually, the other one should pop out too. Watch this section as many times as you need to feel comfortable from start to finish. And remember, don't say you're done with end cap until you have finished the next two brake tests. Once your air brake test is complete, tell the examiner you're ready to do the tug test. The examiner will not prompt you and expects you to know what comes next. As air pressure builds back up, restart the vehicle, release the parking brake. 
that's the yellow valve. Place the vehicle in low gear and gently pull against the trailer brake, the red valve. This checks that the trailer brake will hold the vehicle when pulling forward. Next, release the trailer brake, red, and engage the parking brake, yellow. Place the vehicle in low gear and gently pull against the parking brake. This will hold the vehicle, but the vehicle will gently tug. Next, perform the service brake test. Place the vehicle in low gear, release both brakes, drive forward about five miles per hour, pressing firmly on the brake. The vehicle should stop without pulling to the left or right. As you do this test, make sure you tell the examiner what you're looking for. Now you have completed your in-cab inspection and you should be ready to take your test. As you prepare for your exam, here are the three most important things to remember. Study all parts because you don't know which section you'll be asked to inspect. It will help you on the test and more importantly, keep you and others safe on the road. Watch this video as many times as you need to feel comfortable and confident in the material. You should know it well enough to teach it to someone else. The air brake test is priority. If you don't do it perfectly, it's an automatic fail. Good luck on your test. We look forward to seeing you start your new career. Bye.